We're launching a new series. It's launching today. And it, in over the next few weeks, we're gonna answer some, some kind of uh, complicated and most commonly asked questions. And the title of the series is Ever Wonder Why? Uh, ever Wonder Why? Have you ever wondered why? Uh, and, and there was a question a- after this, like why would God allow bad things to happen? We're going to dive into these questions. Some of the questions are actually keeping people from their faith in Christ. And then some questions that many people ask are actually um, causing people to doubt or even walk away from their faith in Christ. So throughout July, we're going to we're going to answer some of these questions starting today. But I want you to say this after me. Say it out loud. Can you can you repeat this after me? Say this. Say God is good, God is good. All, the time. all the time, and all the time, all the time. God, is good. God is good. That was good. Let's do it again. Come on, say God is good, God is good. all the time. All the time. And all the time, time, God is good. good. I don't know why that had a cadence to it. It feels like we should make that a song. It had a little bit of a rhythm to it. But God is good. And let me ask you a question. Have you ever doubted that God was good? Have you ever had moments in your life based on your circumstances that you wondered, is it true that, is it good? I've wondered about the goodness of God myself. And, And I can tell you today we should... We, we struggle sometimes because as believers, as Christians, we're not supposed to ever doubt, right? I'm a believer. I'm not supposed to have any doubts. I should always have faith in the goodness of God. But I wonder if there's anybody in this room watching online that like me, you have doubted the goodness of God. You've doubted it and, and you, you might be experiencing something that is not fair, something that doesn't It's not what you signed up for. Anybody ever say that? You're going through something. You're like this. I did not sign up for this. This is not, that's not right. This doesn't seem right. And and you think right now, God is not doing a good job for me right now. And, And God, this doesn't really feel good right now. Maybe you lost a job. Maybe you lost a parent. Maybe you went through a divorce. Maybe a spouse betrayed you. Maybe you lost a loved one who went on to heaven. Maybe you, you lost them prematurely. Something happened in your life and you are asking the question, God, why? I'm wondering, God, why did you let this happen? Has anybody ever asked that? You don't have to raise your hand, but just kind of nod because I can see, yes, you've asked it. Maybe even today, like, God, I'm, I've got chronic migraines. When are you going to take these away? God, I've been battling this depression for years. When are you going to heal me from this? Or God, when are you going to take away this temptation from me? God, but, but why, why is it that, you know, I'm battling this lack or whatever it is. God, when are you going to take this away and you're saying to God in, a, in your ordinary life, just going through your life saying, God, I'm trying to do what's right. I go to church. I'm a good person. I give sometimes. You know, I'm good. I read my version Bible app, you know, when I think about it or, or maybe I do all the time. I, I give a little bit. I try to help people. I try to do what's right, God. But at this point, God, I should be happier. God, things should be easier, shouldn't be like this. And maybe, maybe if those aren't your issues, you kind of have this a, a bigger way of looking at the world. You don't necessarily look at yourself, but you begin to think, man, what is, look at this world. How could this world be so bad? Why are all of these people hurting and dying all around me? Why are children starving? There's all these global atrocities all around the world. Why are innocent people suffering? And if you've ever asked that question, then you're going to enjoy this message today. And I pray that you receive a word from God. And if that question is, why God did it let it, why God did it happen? Why did you let it happen, God? I want to help answer that question for you. But first, we're going to pray. Let's, let's go to the Lord and ask the Lord to give us insight. Father, I thank you today for the wisdom that only comes from you. I pray right now, Father, that as we open up your word, your Holy Spirit would do a work on the inside of us. God, do a work in the hearts of those who are questioning right now, those who are struggling, hurting, and even in the middle of pain and disappointment. God, I pray that we would see your goodness. We pray this in the name of Jesus, and everybody said amen. Amen Amen and amen. Amen? 
So I want to I want to ask you the question: Why did it happen? Um, before I actually jump into the message, I have um, a friend of mine. She's actually a part of our house, a part of our church, and I want to just kind of set the stage up for what God does and what God can do. I want to fill you with faith. Can I do that? Because we're going to walk through some things. I want you to welcome Diane Moreno. She's going to come right now. Come on, let's give it up for Diane. I've known her for many years. You can hand her that mic, and she has an incredible story. Her family all uh, go to ch- church here. Rick is her husband, and her children are here, and, and she's been through something. The last few months, we've been praying and believing God for a breakthrough. Would you share your story with us? Good morning, everybody. My name Come is Diane, right there, so and um, it actually started a year ago. A year ago, uh, my husband and I went through um, a hit like you can't even imagine. Yep. Yeah. And we've been, my husband was born and raised in church. I was born and raised in church. Strong believers. Never in the world did I ever think that it was going to hit us the way it hit us. My husband lost his job due to the hit that we had. I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of details. We had enough money to last us a year. He hasn't been working and, and I'm just, I'm working. I got an extra job. I'm working two jobs and my husband still don't have a job, and I'm just like, okay, God, I'm believing, I'm believing. A year ago, I was up here praying because I was in a fetal position with anxiety and fear. For That lasted for about three months. I've never in my life ever experienced anxiety and fear. I prayed for people that struggled with that, and I went through that. The worst, I, I wouldn't even want that on my enemy. That's how bad fear and anxiety that hit me. So I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm believing. I've got pastor praying for me. I've got Miss LaVon praying. I've got a lot of people praying. Um, I'm making this long story short. Money ran out. A year went by, money ran out. It was about two months ago. My husband tells me, after church, I was sitting right here in the front row. After church, he tells me, I didn't pay the mortgage. And I'm like, what? Fear and anxiety that I was set free from hit me again that Sunday morning as we were going home. We're going to the restaurant. I'm like, I got to suck this up because I have my kids with me. I have my grandkids and I got to put on a happy face. There I am texting my kids because there's one thing that I don't do. I do believe in sharing with people what you're going through if they have that same faith and not going to doubt. And my kids, I've shared everything with my kids. I'm, I don't sugarcoat anything. I don't sugarcoat life. My kids know the hard times and the good times that mom and dad have gone through. So I'm texting them. And they're all like, okay, we can sell the house, mom. Y'all can get a smaller house. We can sell dad's car because it's paid for. Um, we're, and you'll have enough money to last you until dad gets a job and blah, 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 this and all this stuff. And, and I'm literally trembling And I'm like, God, please, please, I need this to go away. So I ended up, I'm like, I think I was, it was Miss LaVon that I text. I texted her. We started praying. We started believing. Still two months, this was like two, three months ago. Still no job, still nothing. Long story short, I think it was three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, my husband still doesn't have a job, mind you, and, I'm, and I know why Pastor brought me up here. To hear, I'm here to encourage you because we paid our mortgage three months because we were behind three months. I thought we were going <laughs> to be homeless. I was like, I'm going to have to move in with one of my kids. I'm going to have to sell my husband's going to have to sell the car. What am I going to do? Three months. We were, I won't even go that far. God provided. God paid our three months mortgage. I share this with you because I want you to remain faithful and believing. 
Every song that we sang today, I was like, oh my gosh, that's me. Oh my gosh, God did that for me. Because God didn't fail my mom. God didn't fail his parents. And God's not going to fail me. And he's not going to fail my children or my grandchildren. That's not the God that we serve. He is so faithful. And on top of that, we have enough money that I don't have to worry about paying mortgage because I know also my husband still don't have a job, but I know it's coming and I know the right one is coming because that's the God that I serve. Come on. Awesome. Somebody give God a shout of praise. He's able to do it. He's already provided for you. Come on, let's give him praise. 30 seconds, let's thank God for provision. If he can do it for her, he can do it for you. He can do it for you. Miracles and favor, I just command that. I believe that's coming to your house in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Diane, for sharing that. I knew that would, that would inspire your faith. And she didn't tell you all of the details, but it is above and beyond. It's still kind of happening, but it's above and beyond what she even asked God to do. It's a jaw-dropping miracle. It's a jaw-dropping miracle. And then our son, Nathan, he's not going to share it today, but maybe in, in the next couple of weeks, he has a jaw-dropping miracle that God's going to use him to share as a way. That's what I want to live. I want July to be jaw-dropping. I want it to be a miracle that you're just, in, you're stunned. I believe God can do more, which the, the, the last half of this year than he ever did in the beginning. You don't need to say, well, you know, I had this vision board and it was supposed to happen by June and now we're in July. Forget that. God's not inside time. And, and it just might be that you needed to rest a little bit the first part of the year. And now God's going to accelerate all the work that you've done. I'm, just get ready for what God's going to do. And he's going to touch everything you've been working on. They've been faithful. They've been giving. Even when they didn't have a lot, they stayed faithful. And I'm telling you, God gave her a breakthrough for her family. And it's incredible. It's incredible. Let's give God praise one more time. So the, the question might be, well, that's great, but why does God even let that happen? Why do we have to go through seasons like that? Why, why does he make it so hard sometimes? Well, I want to help you with that today because this is a question that's been asked really probably since the beginning of time. Why did God even let that happen? If you go back 300 years, even before the birth of Jesus, there was a Greek philosopher. His name was Epicurus. Epicurus, he was a Greek philosopher, and he came to conclusions about the nature of God concerning good and evil. And he had two statements, and uh, actually he had two statements and a question. He had two statements and a question that he would ask. The first statement he said is this. He said, if God is not able to prevent evil, if he can't stop bad things from happening, then God must not be all powerful. So if bad things are happening and God doesn't stop it, that must mean that God is not powerful enough. And then the next big statement that he would make would was this, if God's not willing to prevent evil, he must not be all good. Then that led him to ask this question. If God is both willing and able to prevent evil, then why does evil exist? These are questions we've been asking through time. Why did God let it happen? And can I just cut to the chase sometimes? Uh, it's just better to kind of cut to the chase. The reality is we're going to suffer in this life. If you don't understand that, you, you know, now you'll it, it receive that as a young person, as a whatever age you are. We, I was raised word of faith. Everything was faith, faith, faith. God's able, God's able. But there are things, yes, he is able. And yes, we, they taught us the right way. You are going to go through tribulations. You're going to go through trials. But what you're doing is, is you're sharing in the sufferings of Christ. We, we see what Jesus went through. Jesus took care of the death penalty once and for all. So we never have to worry about death. We never have to worry about the penalty of death. The Bible tells us that we are going to suffer. We must suffer in times of trial to share in his glory. But the question is, is it worth it? Is it worth it? And if you can go with me today in Romans 8, chapter 8 and verse 18, if you have your Bibles, open those very quickly. We're going to go through this very quickly because I feel like you've already heard a word. 
<laughs> Diane brought an, an incredible, encouraging word to you. But go with me to Romans 8, chapter 18. And Paul says, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time, this present life, are not worth being compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us and in us and for us and conferred on us. I consider the sufferings of this present are not even comparable to what glory is about to be revealed in us. Sometimes God allows us to suffer because it's just part of sharing in the glory. And many of us think we suffer because of our circumstances. And we do. We believe that if our circumstances would change, we'd be able to act right. But God wants to get us to a place of maturity that we are acting right when things are wrong. That's so important that you and I as believers and as we mature and we're disciples, that we are people who act right when everything is wrong. That's what we do as believers. We have to get our attitude right, even if everything's falling apart around us. That's our challenge today. So God wants us to become mature. He wants us to become stable, that we act right even when circumstances are not good. And I love to say, you know, God is good even when my bank account is empty. God's good when my money's not good. God's good when I'm sick. He's good when I'm whole. God's good when I lack. He's good when I'm favored. God's good all the time, and all the time, God is good. I just need to know that, remember that, believe that, and act like that is true. My circumstances do not determine my outlook on life. Now, this is a, this is a challenge for many of us, but some of you are kind of more from the positive side of life, but we can all learn that God is taking us through different different levels of our faith, challenging us, maturing us, stabilizing us. And most of the time we want to use our faith to get rid of a problem. If I just have enough faith, I'll get rid of it. But sometimes God's plan for us is to go through the trial so that we exercise our faith so that that higher level of faith will actually carry us through life's challenges. This is even better. This is the greater faith that we need that is better than being delivered from a situation. Many of us, we just want to find the, the nearest escape route. Just get me out of this problem when the problem is actually producing glory in us. Many times we'll look at God's delivering power and we'll celebrate that and we get so excited and, and we forget that he is keeping, enabling, and empowering power. He'll keep you in the middle of a trial. He wants to teach you how he'll keep you. He'll enable you. He'll deliver you in some cases, but many times he's going to cause you to walk through some suffering. And I want to talk about some of the, the reasons why I believe God allows it to happen or however you want to say that. I, if you've ever wondered why, I think many times we suffer because of a lack of knowledge of the word. Some of the suffering we go through, we ask God, why did you let it happen? And God's like, I didn't let it happen. I didn't want it to happen. I gave you everything that you needed to avoid that pitfall, that struggle, that problem. Not always. There are times where we face things and, and, and it's just out of our control and we didn't do anything to cause it. But I would say, if I'm being honest about my own life, most of the things that I would call suffering are areas that I just did not know the word. I did not exercise the word of God in my life. Many Christians suffer because they have this carnal knowledge of God. Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Paul in the Bible was an educated man. He had a wealth of carnal knowledge. And when he realized the importance of spiritual knowledge, he said this in 1 Corinthians 2, 2. This is so important, guys. We need to hear this. The words of Paul, 1 Corinthians 2, 2. He said, I resolved to know nothing to be acquainted with nothing, to make a display of the knowledge of nothing, and to be conscious of nothing among you except Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and him crucified. We need to learn the importance of learning spiritual things. 
It's important. We, we are so busy, myself included, just gathering wisdom, gathering edu- education, gathering words that other people have said that are just so in- inspiring or so, but that's not God's word. It might line up with God's word, but all you really need at the end of the day is the knowledge of God's word to stay out of most of the suffering that we go through. We just don't know the word. Galatians 6, 8 says, he who sows to his own flesh, or in other words, your flesh is the lower nature, your sensuality, will from the flesh reap decay and ruin and destruction. But he who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. I think this scripture says everything we need to know today. We need to know this word. This is why we suffer because we are sowing to our flesh. We are sowing sometimes to that lower nature, that fleshly desire. And what happens is the more you, wherever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. And if you're sowing to your flesh, if you're sowing to your own desires more than you are sowing to the spirit, the things of God, the time in God's word, the time in worship, the things you think about, the things you're praying about what you're reading in God's word, that has to shift your mindset so that you're not just leaning into all of that lower nature because that's what you'll reap. I didn't understand that if, that if I went down this road that I chose, that it would be so hard. Well, you chose the road. Let's chose God's paths for our lives. His word says your steps are ordered. A righteous man, just stay righteous. Stay in right standing with God. Stay every day in the word of God as much as you can. If it's five minutes a day, read a scripture, listen to a message. We have a YouTube channel. Did y'all know that? You can hear this message again. It's up. All of our messages are up. And let this just be the words that are just going through your mind all the time. Or maybe you like Joyce Meyer. Maybe you like T.D. Jakes. It doesn't matter. Find something that gives you life that's the Word of God and feed on that. Sow to that. That's why we suffer many times because we lack knowledge that the Word holds for us. Another reason why many times we suffer is disobedience. Once we know the word of God, we have a responsibility to be obedient to that word. Once you know something, you need to be obedient. Many times we intend on being obedient, but we put obedience off. Did you know that procrastination is disobedience? Well, this hurt me. This hurt because when I I was like, Jesus, when he showed, the Holy Spirit showed me this. I'm like, this is painful because, you know, I have, my spiritual gift is procrastination. I thought I was just waiting on the Lord. I need you to give me four fleeces, you know, and a, and a donkey that walks in and speaks before I, before I do it. And, and the, even procrastination is disobedience. There are times where God will say, I need you to speak now. I need you to give now. I need you to move now. I need you to be obedient now. And because we don't obey the Holy Spirit, we suffer. We suffer. James 4, 7 gives us great advice. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. That's it. Submit your life to God. This is not about us. And when God, can I just give you a quick little note here? When God tells you to do something, just write it down. If you're afraid to do it, just just take the step and write it down. If you hear the Holy Spirit speak to you, just write it down. It's a great exercise because it's a reminder that I must be obedient if I want God's blessings. For many of us, there is incredible blessing on the other side of our obedience. And we're suffering with fear and anxiety and lack when God is saying there is so much abundance for you, but you're going to have to be obedient. Isaiah 119 tells us if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. You shall eat the good of the land if you're willing. And oh, how many of you are willing? We're all willing. We have to be obedient. Amen. The, The next thing is the reason that many times we suffer is to purify and test your faith. Sometimes people are surprised when we go through the fire and we just don't like the trial. We don't like the suffering. We don't like it. Maybe if you would be faithful to obey the word, you're, you'll see that trials will still come. When you, are, when you are faithful and you're doing everything right, you will see that trials still come. But trials will come simply to purify and test your faith. You really ought to get excited about trials. 
you really ought to be a little kind of excited about it, a little happy about it, because those trials are testing you and purifying you for something greater. As a matter of fact, 1 Peter 1 and verses 6 and 7 tells us, it says, you should be exceedingly glad. See, that's a whole mindset shift right there. You've got to be glad on this account, though now for a little while you may be distressed by trials and suffer temptations so that the genuineness of your faith may be tested. Your faith, which is infinitely more precious than the perishable gold, which is tested and purified by fire. This proving of your faith is intended to rebound to your Praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one is revealed. Your faith is being tested. Your faith is being proven. Why? Because Jesus is coming back. And you want to be in right standing. He's going to be revealed. And you and I need to be able to see him when he comes. He shows up every day in our lives. And as we're obedient to him, as we allow God to take us, purify us, test us, we begin to see God in everything. If you're only seeing all the negative, if you're only seeing what God isn't doing, you need, to, you need to know right now you're being tested, you're being purified because God wants to purify you so that all that's left is just pure. You know, that song I sang, tried in the fire, but you're coming out gold. It's a new season, it's a new day. Fresh anointing is flowing my way. We love all of that, but you've gotta be tried in the fire to purify, to burn off the things that are distracting you, that are holding you down, that are keeping you in suffering longer than God intended. Number four, here's another reason why we suffer. We need to be broken. We go through seasons many times. God will call us to a place of brokenness and don't let brokenness strike fear in your heart. Many times we just think, oh, that's a bad word, and God wants to break me. No, God doesn't want to break your spirit, but he wants to break your flesh. He wants to break that outer shell. He wants that flesh that's preventing him from being all that he wants to be to you, and you being all that you want to be to God in you and through you. He wants to break off things like pride. He wants to break off rebellion. He's trying to break off selfishness and independence from God. He wants you to be dependent on him. God wants us to be dependent and suffering many times will bring us to that point. Diane mentioned that a few weeks ago. She came down here. Why? She was suffering, man. She was feeling it. She was low. It didn't look like anything good was going to come. And she was at at the 11th, like past midnight, God, I need you to show up. And God didn't say, well, I just, I don't want you to go through any more pain, Diane. I'm going to come through for you right now. No, he allowed her to even go through it a little bit more. And I remember a week after that, I was standing here and I was preaching and I said, somebody in, I just feel sometimes when I say this, I'm really talking to myself, but if you want to grab it, you can, if it resonates with you. But I said, I said, I feel like there's somebody in this room today. And when you see what God is preparing for you, you are going to be embarrassed at how low you got. You are going to be embarrassed at how much you fretted over that situation. And she came to me after and she said, pastor, with the tears, I was that, that was me. I was so upset. I was, how did I get that low? I'm a person of faith. I'm a woman that I know I've seen God come through. How did I let myself get so low? Can I tell you that was purifying? That was testing. There was a test of obedience. Why? Because he wanted to, to, to provide more than she could ever have imagined on her own and he could trust her with the more and God is saying listen don't feel sorry for yourself oh God I'm so lonely and 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 I don't have anybody but you God the Holy Spirit's going well I guess you'll just have to put up with me and God I guess we're just the I guess that's all you got. No, all I need is God. All I need is the Holy Spirit. God wants us to get to that place that we'll discover that having God is the only position we even need to be in. And then another reason that we suffer is to build compassion in our hearts. 
We go through situations and compassion is born out of experiencing problems that other people go through. When you are compassionate, Pastor Dan and I, when we started this church, we had gone through a couple things, but nothing major, but we went through some things in our own family that was crushing and it was a brokenness season for us, but it was equipping. Do you know that every time you go through a season of suffering and trial, it equips you for what God is calling you to? We don't ever wanna go through anything bad, but it's the bad seasons that actually birth the greatest seasons of our lives. Many of you would say, I'd get up and speak, but I don't have a testimony. Be careful what you say, because it's the test in, that, that you go through in your life that creates the testimony. I heard someone say the other day, they were, they were millionaires and they were talking about, you know, t- teaching other millionaires and young men who wanted to be millionaires how to, how to you know, be strong and, and courageous and get out and do stuff. And one young man said, well, you know, I, I don't have any story to tell. I don't, I don't have great stories like you to tell. And, and, and he's trying to make millions. He's trying to, you know, build his company. And they said, well, you need to go create a story, like go and travel through, you know, the Middle East or something, or go somewhere where it's dangerous and just get out and go. And he said, well, what if I get robbed? What if I get, you know, beaten? They're like, well, there's your story. <laughs> and, and there are people that understand that it's not the trial, the suffering does not mean that God is mad at you. Does it mean that God hates you? Actually, God wants to show you deliverance in your own life so that you can be useful in the kingdom so that you can use what you've been through to help someone else. Compassion that reaches out to other hurting people. And you can say, I've been there, baby. God took me through that. He brought me out. I know exactly what you're going through. There's no judgment here. I've got so much compassion. And I know that if God brought me through it, he's going he's gonna to bring you through it. And then, and then sometimes God, God will take us through suffering so that we can encourage others. Did you know that God wants to use you as a spiritual object lesson? That's what, that's what God will do. He'll allow you to go through, through some things that will just simply just be an object lesson for other people. Philippians 1 says, I want you to know and continue to rest assured, brethren, that what has happened to me, this imprisonment, has actually only served to advance and give a renewed impetus to the spreading of the good news, the gospel. Most of the brethren have derived fresh confidence in the Lord because of my chains and are much more bold to speak and publish fearlessly the word of God. See, even in Paul's imprisonment, he stayed stable and able to be used by God. Even in prison, Paul stayed stable and able to be used by God. That's a tweet. That's a t-shirt. That's something. God, uh, listen, take me through whatever you need to take me because I want to be tried in the fire. I want to be obedient to your word because I know there's greater glory. And while I'm going through it, help me be stable and able to be used by God. And if I got to walk through some difficult seasons, I know that God is going to bring me through the trial and I'm coming out better than I went in. Amen. Amen. All right, I've got to hurry up because it's late. Are y'all doing okay? Everybody feeling good? Listen, let me just say, out of all the complicated questions people ask about God, many of us rarely ask, if there's no God, then who decides that there's evil? There's no God. Who decides what evil is or even if there is evil? And can I tell you, I grew up with two sisters and we fought like cats like wild animals, and my mother would get so upset. Finally, as we got older, she'd just shut the door and let us fight it out. Go, y'all just come out when you're done. Mary and I, my twin sister and I, we used to get mad over, and it would be stuff like, you drove, it's my turn to drive. When you're 16 and you get your license for the first time, you know what I'm saying? You're fighting over who's gonna drive, and then in about four or five weeks, you're like, no, you drive. I don't wanna drive, I wanna finish my makeup, and then you're fighting over Who's going to drive? It switches. And Mary and I would get so mad at each other. We're twins. And we would get so mad. Remember those ski jackets that you used to have where you could zip out the sleeves? Well, we would zip out the sleeves and fight with the sleeves. (laughs) With the zipper part. Out. And then we would fight. And then you're stupid. No, you're stupid. You shut up. No, you shut up. I can't believe it's stupid. You're dumb and you're ugly. Well, I'm your twin and you look just like me. So if I'm ugly, you're ugly. And oh, when I can't stand you and you're, oh. 
And my mother, I'm just telling you, she would say, listen, y'all better stop. And she'd make rules like no fighting in my house, no fighting. Well, well what, if, what if there were no parents? What if there were no rules? There has to be an authority. There has to be a standard. If there's no God, there's no moral point of reference. And can I tell you, we cannot use the presence of evil and the suffering we go through as proof God does not exist. The reality is our belief in evil and in suffering is more proof that he does. Because when God shows up to deliver us, we can say it was all God and it was all good. And he brought me through the fire when it looked like I was going to die. I was going to give up. I was going to sink. I was going to drown. And if there is no God and I have to suffer, that's even worse. Even in the suffering, at least I've got God. If I didn't have my problems and there was no God, I'd have nothing. But even with my problems, I've still got God. Come on, somebody. I've still got my God. I've still got a God who's able to deliver. I've still got a God who's going to bring me through the storm. I've still got a God who is faithful to do exactly what he promised, exceedingly, abundantly, above all. I'll go through the suffering. I'm not really worried about it. You know why? Because Jesus went through the suffering, and there's no one perfect except him. He didn't deserve it. He didn't even bring it on himself. He showed up to the assignment that his father had for him. Jesus, the son of God, he gave his life, the ultimate suffering. Jesus, the one who was born into poverty, he was mocked, he was beaten. He was wrongfully imprisoned, he was tortured, he was stripped naked, separated from his father. He cried out in Matthew 27. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus came and he suffered with us. Jesus knows everything that you've gone through. He has felt more pain than you will ever feel. And God watched it all. So why does God allow suffering? Can I tell you today? It's not because God does not love you. Can I tell you today? You're suffering, but it's not because God does not love you. He loves you with an everlasting love. He loves you more than you could ever imagine. John 3, 16 tells us, for God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God loves you so much, he took your misery. He took you, you, your, your shame. He took it all. He was willing, God was allowing his son to take it all on himself. Why? Let me tell you why. Because something better was coming. That's what I want you to get in your heart today. Whatever you're going through, just say, God, I'm, I'm going to walk this thing out with you. There's an area of my life I'm being disobedient and prolonging the suffering. God, I'm going to be obedient today. There's an area of my life where I lack knowledge in the word of God. You better believe I'm getting in the word of God today. I'm going to find out what it says about suffering. I'm going to find out what God's word says about lack. I'm going to discover what does God's word say about obedience. I'm going to look up on my YouVersion Bible app and the plan. I'm going to go look and search it out today. And I'm going to get it ready for Monday morning. I'm going to be prepared all week to dive into the word of God so that I am being shaped by God's word. And if God, you're walking me through a season of trial and suffering, I'm submitting to it. If I'm adding to it, teach me. Yes. Teach me. Life is hard enough. I don't want to add to my suffering. But can I tell you something is coming that's so much better. That, that's why Jesus is not really worried about what you're walking through right now. That's why Diane can say, I don't know why God took so long. He's not worried about it. I don't understand why Mary and Martha came to Jesus and said, your beloved brother is about to die. And he just kind of said, all right, I'll see y'all later. He let days go by. He let Lazarus die. Some of you, the suffering that you're going through is because God has allowed things to die so that he can show up and bring it back to life. And you're surrounded by your family, your friends who thought it was over, who thought, man, man, that's some deep suffering. That's some bad stuff. I don't know why. Good God. That person, lo she loves God. She goes to church every week. I know he gives. Why would God let this happen? 
But when God shows up, when Jesus steps on the scene, just like he did for Diane, like he did for Nathan, like he did for many of you, what he does is so, the glory of God that shows up is so much greater than the suffering. It's going to absolutely make your jaw drop. There's something better coming. Why do we suffer? Don't worry about it. Something better is coming. Why do I got to walk through this? Don't worry about it, baby. Something better is coming. Why does life have to be so hard? Why am I experiencing lack? Why did I lose my house? Don't worry about it. Something better is coming. And in the meantime, while I wait, I'm going to worship. I'm going to shout. I'm going to show up to church declaring the goodness of God. I'm going to know the Word of God. I'm going to be obedient to God's Word. I'm going to do everything I can to line up my life with what God has said. I refuse to fall into a pit of despair. I refuse to walk in fear and anxiety just because my circumstances look a certain way. It may look like I'm defeated. It might look like it's over. But you just wait to see what my God does for me when He shows up in the middle of my problem, in the middle of my circumstance. God's going to do more. Something better is coming. Something greater is coming. Somebody needs to give God a shout of praise. Woo! I'll stay in the fire. I'll stay in the tight place. I'll stay in the trial. I'll stay in the tribulation. I'll be exceedingly glad no matter how bad it gets. Why? Something better is coming. I declare that over you if you're watching online something better you need to get excited about the trial you need to be you need to feel goosebumps like man man it, it's gonna it might get a little worse before it gets better Madeline but let me tell you what God is doing is so much better than you could ever ask or think what, what you're asking God to do just just you, you don't have the multiplication skills that God has to give you back the glory suffering won't even it won't even you're gonna look back and go that wasn't suffering I thought it was when it's compared to the glory something better's coming something better's coming something better's coming something better's coming build your faith something better is coming you wouldn't be going through this right now if something better if God was not preparing you if God was not refining you God was not Come on, purifying you. Why is he doing it? Because something better is coming. Somebody shout to the Lord today. Woo! Father, I thank you today that we have the faith to receive your word. God, we have the ability to hear and to know what your word that's been deposited on the inside of us needs to do in our hearts. So today I pray that we are being reshaped we are being reconditioned. Our minds are being changed. And we are seeing the struggle. We are seeing the trial in a different perspective. God, we are aligning our lives with you. Anybody that's out of obedience, out of line with God, in the name of Jesus, I just pray right now, if you're walking in rebellion, if you're walking in selfishness, if you're leaning to your lower nature, I just pray right now you'd repent of that and say, God, I'm not going to allow my life to suffer when I've got the answer that's found in the Word of God. I'm not leaning and sowing to my flesh so that I reap more flesh. I'm going to sow to the Spirit. And today I ask, ask the Lord, God, just I repent of selfishness. I repent of disobedience. And today I'm going to align my life and begin to sow into the Spirit. I'm going to begin to sow into the Spirit so I can reap the Spirit. What's the Spirit? Joy, peace, love. Long-suffering, peace, patience, kindness goodness, meekness, gentleness. I got to have more of that. If not, I'm going to suffer. Father, I thank you that you're helping us today to line our, li our lives up with your word so we don't needlessly suffer because of decisions that we're making. Thank you, Father. Get us in right standing with you, Jesus. Come on, if that's you, just say, Lord, I just want to be right with you. You may be a Christian, but you know, I just, God, I just need to be right with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For those of you that are going through a difficult situation like Diane described, and you're holding on, hoping you don't lose your house. Maybe you already did. You lost your job. 
I just pray right now the favor of God on your life. Holy Spirit, open up every door. God is favoring you right now with open doors. God is saying, just hold on. You're being refined. Your story is being told. Just, I got you. I got you. You're like my, you're like Lazarus. Things are going to die, but you're going to see the resurrection come into your house. He's just waiting for a crowd to form so that when the miracle happens, everybody sees the hand of God, the glory of God on your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray for anyone in this room that you are not in right standing with God. Maybe at some point you served God, but it's been a long time and you have been the person that I described in the beginning. You've asked so many questions about your faith that now it's caused you to move away from God. It's caused you to, to leave your first love or your truth or your faith that maybe you had as a young person or at a certain time in your life because of suffering, because of trials, because of God, why am I going through this? It's easy for everybody else. Why is this so hard for me? And that's caused you to doubt your faith and even turn away from your faith altogether. God is calling you back home. Son and daughter, God is calling you back home where there is no suffering. Revelation says there's coming a day, there's no sickness, no tears, no pain, no sorrow, no, no suffering. But we only find that hope an eternal hope in a relationship with Jesus. If you're here today and you would say, I need to make my life right with God. I need to surrender. I need to repent of all my sins. I've made mistakes. We all have. The Bible says we've all fallen short of the glory of God. Not one of us is perfect. We all should feel shame for what we've done. I've made mistakes. But thank God for the goodness of God that erases all that shame. He took the blame. He took the pain. He took it all so that you don't have to live a life suffering because of something that you've done something that you've said a choice you've made today Jesus is saying if you will give me all of that let me wash you clean let me start you brand new if you're in this place today and you would say I need a relationship with Jesus I need forgiveness of sins would you just one two three lift your hand up is there anyone in this room yes thank you Jesus yes 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 Thank you for new life. Thank you for new life. Thank you for new life. Come on, is there anybody else that says, I need to start a new a relationship with Jesus. I need, to, I need a new relationship with Christ. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to say this out loud. Repeat this after me. Say, dear Jesus, I come to you today and I am a sinner in need of a savior. I believe that you hung on a cross and you died for all of my sins. So today, I repent of going my way. I repent of all of my sins and mistakes. And today, I want a brand new start with you. I believe you are the Son of God. And I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for this brand new start I have in you. I believe I am a child of God. Amen and amen. Come on, can we celebrate? Come on, let's clap our hands. This is a day of freedom and celebration for lives that have been changed. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Come on, let's lift up a shout.